<laughs> Hello. I'm first. <laughs> Well, my name is Alicia Cannon, and I am the Program Assistant for Sustainable Energy and Environment. When I first got my business card, it was like seeing my name in Broadway lights. <laughs> Alicia Cannon, Program Assistant. <laughs> but on my first lobby visit with FCNL, I thought to myself, wow, I have made it. And in times of profound life events like my first lobby visit, I attempt to map the moments of my life that have led me there. I'll give you an example. My best friend is a Swede currently living in Scotland and we met at Villanova's campus. <laughs> Random. So we sat down on a bench one day and we figured out the exact moments that had to happen just for us to meet and become best friends. So in that same vein, how did I get to FCNL? My journey started by me being different. I have always been just different. <laughs> Growing up, I spent most of the time with my, the Irish side of my family where I was quite literally the black sheep, <laughs> though my mom would like me to add in skin tone only. <laughs> I was taller, significantly younger, and I could tan a lot better than most of my cousins. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Simultaneously, I attended a predominantly white Catholic school for 12 years where my hair and my body shape did not match the other girls around me. And even though I was young, I couldn't articulate why I felt different. I just knew I was not what I was supposed to be. Luckily, in high school and college, I realized what you're supposed to be is overrated and frankly boring. <laughs> Thanks. Woo! <laughs> As you heard, I forged my path leading me to my studies in political science, theology, and Irish studies at Villanova University. I think my choice of political science makes logical sense. I did not want simply to complain about the world around me or just wait for political change to eventually happen. I wanted to be a part of the change and learn how to change the hearts and minds of Americans. My choice of Irish studies is a bit less obvious. My freshman year, we had to choose a language requirement to fulfill. Now, instead of a practical language, like Spanish, Italian, German, I chose Irish. <laughs> You know why? Because I wanted to know what they were saying in my favorite Celtic woman songs. <laughs> I told you different. <laughs> and lastly, there's theology. In case you did not know, being religious is not exactly cool. However, I use my studies to challenge, deepen, and explore my faith. But this choice can be counterintuitive, especially being a gay young woman raised in the Roman Catholic faith. Now, even though I realized that being different was fine, that did not mean that certain common circles shared the same views. I have sat quietly in many situations out of fear of social isolation or fear of my own mental or physical safety because I was different, and this includes my own church. Now, I love my church. I do, despite its many shortcomings, but there were different moments where I felt a profound sense of being unwelcome. There are moments where I've sat in rooms where Individuals equated homosexuality to pedophilia. So, I grew tired. Tired of this underlying feeling of isolation that ran through my worship. I half-heartedly sought religious inclusive spaces, but luckily, as always, my mom stepped in. When my mother and my aunt took me to a nuns on the bus event for the first time, I know they're great. <laughs> my eyes were open to the world of faith-based social justice. It was a transformative experience because I finally found a space where politics, inclusivity, and theology all work together in harmony. This is what religion is supposed to be, specifically in my case, the Catholic Church. It is inclusive love for thy neighbor and defending those who need your help without hesitation. A difference in race, religion, sexuality, or first language was not looked down upon, but rather uplifted and celebrated. Now we all have our own space where we feel loved, safe, welcomed, and appreciated. All these different places that vary from person to person are on our planet. Therefore, our planet is a naturally inclusive space. But because of an action surrounding our current climate crisis, our inclusive space is dying. Extreme weather is becoming more frequent. The oceans are acidifying. Coastal communities are literally washing away. And although we celebrate difference in individuals, we should not exalt difference in formerly predictable climate patterns. We should not celebrate being the only country to leave the Paris Climate Agreement. 
This should alarm us. This is not normal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Extraordinary climate events devastate areas across the globe every week. While the extreme ends of the climate impact spectrum are not felt in the US yet, we must love thy neighbor and recognize that others are losing their homes, their livelihoods, and their lives at the hands of the climate crisis. We must take responsibility as a country for our role in contributing to climate change and take immediate action to remedy the crisis we have exacerbated. If we truly are a global leader in both emissions and moral responsibility, it is time to act like an authority figure and address the emergency of our time. Now I know this seems like a huge lofty goal to literally save the planet, but luckily FCNL attracts passionate leaders who push our government towards necessary drastic change. So how did I get to FCNL? I knew I wanted to be a lobbyist, but I would not sell out my principles. FCNL is committed to what is just, not what is just the status quo. When working on legislation, you need to question and challenge what is deemed normal. We must remember that the world we live in, the weather, the bigotry, the anger is not normal. FCNL also brings to the forefront the commonality of our fears, desires, and missions to be better citizens. And in doing this, taps into the strength of our diversity and unity. In order to fix our world, we must come together celebrate our differences, and find common ground. Thank you. Thank you.